Who's ready to make a TBR for probably one of my favourite reading months? I love reading in November, so let's find out what I'm going to be reading! Hello detectives! Hi! <laughs> Welcome to November's edition of TBR Cluedo, my TBR game. We've been doing this for a long time. If you're new here, if you want to find out the rules, you can go <laughs> check out the first video. But it's also pretty easy to just figure out as we go along. There's different rooms in this game which correlate to genres and then I get a prompt and I have to read a book that fits that prompt in that genre is essentially the idea. Skillshare is the sponsor of this video but we'll talk about that a little bit later. And today we're going to be figuring out my TBR for November. I love reading in November. November to me screams mysteries, it screams like coziness, reading by the fire. I don't have a fire but like I can put an ambiance video on YouTube. <laughs> it's a lot of fantasies and when I feel the fantasy it is my reality. So yeah, TBR Cluedo is in control of what I'm reading in November. I do want to preface this video by saying <laughs> the books that TBR Cluedo made me pick I actually don't currently have. I have. There's a lot of books on the way to me for various videos. I have other books that, you know, I have to read for other videos. The ones I have, it didn't really want to pick. <laughs> the ones that are on it, their way to me and have been delayed, it wanted to pick. So we're gonna have a lot of pictures of books today because yeah, TBR could just like, I just want to make life hard for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> but anyways, let's just get into finding out what TBR Cluedo picked for me this month. Okay, time for roll one. Person number eight, which is blue over here. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a one and a five. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six to number 17, which is a book out of your comfort zone. So roll one was a contemporary that is out of my comfort zone. And for this, I have picked Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I think that's the right amount of tomorrows. I never thought I'd be reading this book. Thanks for the opportunity, but I love sorry, it. hang on Mark, sorry, I'm a bit scared. I need to see. Can you get me out of here? Oh, wow. This is a new release that came out this year that I was like, that's just not for me. I'm just not gonna be reading it. Turns out I am. <laughs> I just have to trust, without spoiling anything, the way that this has been chosen for me means that I will enjoy it, and I just have to put my faith in the choosing process, and I have to read it. <laughs> So, all I really know about it is that it's about gaming, like a video game creation, about two characters who like love each other, but like come in and out of each other's lives. I just like, I, I, mm. <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of like video games. I don't think I'm like in video game culture. I mean, I like, I play The Sims. Bratz Rock Angels and Forever Diamonds. I mean, gamer girl. <laughs> But also it's like a contemporary with romance. I don't read a ton of that. I just don't know if it's for me. I really don't know if it's for me, but it's been chosen for me. I have to read it. And then TV could have doubled down. It was like, yeah, bitch, you're not getting out of this one. <laughs> you have to read it. So I'm reading it. Um, I'm intrigued to see what I think of it. I am nervous, but let's just give it a go and see what happens. But yeah, this one is definitely out of my comfort zone. Roll number two. Person number three, which is red over here. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a two and a two. Let's just go one, two, three, four to number 27, which is a book rated three stars on Goodreads. Okay, so roll two was a historical that is rated three stars on Goodreads. This is any book on Goodreads that is three point something. So, you know, I'd say like an average rating for a book on Goodreads is probably like four so it's a little bit or maybe like 3.8 so it's a little bit of a less liked book but still a book that i'm interested in reading and this is the one that i gave to my patrons vote on so my patrons vote on one round of tbr cluedo every month and then that ends up being our book club pick for the month so the options that i gave them are all ones i'm really excited to read so i was like pretty much i was happy with whatever they picked so the options that they had were velvet was the night by sylvia moreno garcia people of abandoned character by claire whitfield the lie tree by francis harding and the wolf and the woodsman by ava reed now it was pretty close between The Wolf and the Woodsman and Velvet Was the Night, but in the end, was 51% of the vote was Velvet Was the Night by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I am so excited. So basically, in November, it's not in TBR Cluedo, it didn't fit any prompts, but I'm also going to be reading 
the daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreau Garcia. And this, which means I'm reading my first two Sylvia Moreau Garcias in November and I'm still yet to read Mexican Gothic, which is the first one I bought and the one that everyone probably wants me to read. So. <laughs> hey, clown. Jester, you have done it again. Constantly raising the bar for the circus and doing it foolishly. I don't know too much about this other than it's set in Mexico City in the 1970s. I know we're following two characters. One is a student. Is she a student? Yeah, she's a student. And then the other's a, this is a goon for hire. <laughs> and they are both trying to uncover a mystery of, I think, the student's friend has gone missing and they're trying to figure out what has happened. I really love the vibes of this, especially the back. Like, just the font they use and the imagery. I like, I get the vibe. I get the vibe, Sylvia. <laughs> so yeah, still not gonna be reading Mexican Gothic, but I am gonna be reading Velvet Was A Night with my patrons in November. If you wanna come join us, links always down below in the description. I love my patron. I love chilling out with everyone on there. I'm reading sprints, quiz nights, movie nights. We do so much over there, early access to videos. If you're on the top tier, you get two of the TBR Cluedo books and a personal letter sent out to you. So go check it out down below if you've ever thought about it, thought about coming and joining us. But yeah, we're gonna be reading Velvet Was A Night together. In November and I'm very very excited I think this is kind of different than any other book we've read in the book club so far but before we get into the rest of the roles I want to thank the sponsor of today's video which is Skillshare have a specific skill you're trying to learn Skillshare is literally the perfect place to start they have photography illustration graphic design creative writing and so much more you can find classes to match your goals and interests Skillshare is always ad free so you stay in the zone learning I love Skillshare I mean you guys know if you've watched me talk about Skillshare before I've used Skillshare for literally probably like eight years at this point. Skillshare has taught me a lot of what I know and I think it's just such a wonderful place to learn. New premium classes are launched every single week so there's always something new to learn and discover and the entire catalogue is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. I've spoken to you guys a lot about uh, skills based courses I've done in the past that are very you know skills <laughs> like tech tech based so like video editing or photography is kind of the stuff that I've done a lot of before but I'm wanting to do more courses now that are more maybe lifestyle holistic looking at my life as a broader picture so one I'm really enjoying right now is plants at home uplift your spirit and space by Christopher Griffin aka plant queen when I envisage my perfect home plants are definitely very very present and so I've been loving hearing from an expert on the best beginner plants how to best take care of them how to you know arrange them in the space that you have I've really really been loving it so you can take this course for free by using the link in my description box You'll also receive unlimited access to tens of thousands of courses for a whole month. So if you've ever thought about using Skillshare, definitely go check out the link in the description. Okay, let's get back into the roles. Next role, person number seven, which is brown over here in horror. Let's see how many we roll. Oh my goodness. I've got a four and a four. Okay, this room's very tight. So what can we do with that? Can we do one, two, three, four? Oh, we can. Okay, that is number 19, which is a book I've hauled recently. So roll three was a horror that I have hauled recently. Now this is technically, I'm like pushing it here because, because I haven't technically hauled this yet. <laughs> It's on its way to me, but it is The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward. Now, this is another one I don't know too much about. I'm going to be honest with you. It's another one that has been chosen for me. This is a book that I've always been interested in. It was on, like, my wish list and stuff, so I've always been interested in reading it. But... <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm going to go to Baskin Robbins. I know there's a cat. Let's look up the description together. The story of a serial killer, a chosen child, revenge, death an ordinary house at the end of an ordinary street. All of these things are true, and yet they're all lies. Interesting, I just know there's a cat. You know, that's, that's all, I'm pretty sure there's a cat at least. That's all I've heard people talk about. But yeah, this is a horror that I feel like a lot of people were reading towards the end of last year, but I'm super intrigued to see what I think of it. I know a lot of people have rated this super high. I almost bought it at the end of last year, but we're reading it at the end of this year instead. So <laughs> we eventually got around to it. I really need to get some mystery. <laughs> I've got a lot of mystery to read and we haven't gotten any mystery yet. Person number three, which is red. Okay, we can make this work because the rooms are connected. Let's see how many we roll. Oh my goodness, a four and a two. Okay, what can we get to in mystery with that? Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, which is number one, which is a new to me author. 
So, roll four, we finally got into the mysteries. I have a lot of mysteries I want to read this month, and TVR Pluto was just not cooperating. It was like contemporary, horror, historical, anything but mystery. <laughs> but the prompt was a new to me author, and I have chosen Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. Now, I only realized I did my whole unread to TBR the other, the other week, where I went through every single book on my TBR, and I only realized when doing that, this is by the author of the Veronica Speedwell series. <laughs> I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but- I've connected them. I didn't realize that. And all of you are gonna be like, Megan, why are you reading this one instead of Veronica Speedwell? And it's because that's the series. And listen, once we're in January, the series constraints go off, but I do, like it is a big goal of mine this year and I wanna get the number as low as possible. And there's already a few more books I'm gonna have to read this year. That means I'm starting a new series and I haven't got any plans to finish other series and it's really plaguing me. <laughs> but anyways, I am super excited to read this. I think this is a standalone and this is about, I think these group, how many women? Four women who were like the most notorious <laughs> assassins for hire essentially, but now they're elderly and they're struggling to let go of their past. This sounds right up my street. I love older characters in fiction at the moment. I'm trying to read more than just mystery. It's obviously a very big trend in mystery, especially in the UK I feel like because of the Thursday Murder Club. Uh, for older characters to be a mystery, but I, I want to read it in all genres. I, I really want fantasy. If anyone knows any fantasy with older characters, I'm like, I'm ready because so much of what we read is like 20 to 30 year olds basically. And like after that, not much. <laughs> and this is going to be my introduction to Diana Rayborns. So maybe if I love this, I'll just have to read the Veronica Speedwell series. But listen, it's like seven books long. So starting that is definitely a commitment. <laughs> But yeah, I am super excited to get to this this month. Okay, two more rolls. Person number two, which is purple. Oh my God, great. Okay, we're finally getting the mystery. Um, let's see how many we roll. A six and a two. Um, let's just go one, two, which is number eight, which is a 2022 release. Then roll five, we had another mystery and that was a 2022 release. And I think you guys are gonna be very glad to hear I'm gonna read The Bullet That Missed by Richard Osman. <laughs> I'm so excited! I just can't wait. So many of you know, I love this series. It's one of my favorite series. The Thursday Murder Club series by Richard Osman. I'm so excited. I think I'm gonna prefer this to the second one. I gave the second one five stars, I loved it, but I don't know if it's even gonna be my top 10 of the year, whereas Thursday Meta Club was my favorite or second favorite book of last year. I always get that and the Once and Future Witches mis mixed up. But both of those, interestingly, were read in November last year. It's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. I just feel like November is good reading vibes for me. Re November always like, I just love reading in November, I don't know why. <laughs> this is the third in the series. We're following a group of friends who used to run a Thursday murder club where they tried to solve cold cases, but now murders are turning up on their doorstep. This one, it says a new foe pays Elizabeth a visit, her mission, kill or be killed. On the back it says four unlikely friends, a murder with no body and trouble knocking at their door. How exciting. I just can't wait to read this. This is such a comfort read for me. I will probably like fly through it in an evening if I'm honest with you. I. Love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, and I cannot wait to read it. Okay, final roll. Person number one, which is green. Let's see how many we roll. Got a one and a five. Let's just go one, two, three, four, five, which is number five which is something with blue on the cover. And then finally, roll six was a fantasy with blue on the cover. And I have chosen, I cannot remember the title. It's a long title. The Very Irregular Secret Society, no, Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. Is that it? I don't know, it's here. <laughs> And there's blue on the cover in the UK edition, you know, blue on the sky. I think there's some blue on the car. Um, this is another one that's been chosen for me for a vlog that's coming up this month. And I'm actually so excited. This is one that was very high on my radar already. I just hadn't got around to getting it yet. It reminds me, I mean, the cover is literally House in the and Sea. Like, it's been traced and coloured in a bit differently. <laughs> The shade, the shade of it all. So I reckon that's the vibe we're going with and I loved House in the Cerulean Sea. I feel like I could even, this is like brave words for me, but I feel like I could even love this more than House in the Cerulean Sea because I love witches as well. This is something, I was thinking about this, I did a five star audit where I went through and found correlations with what I love, what I give five stars in books often. And witches, I forgot witches, but witch, I love. Interesting question. Can you shut up? She was very rude. 
Weren't you? I forgot how much I love witches. Maybe because I said sisters and often I love like the sisters I love, like the ones future witches are also witches. But I'm so in I'm so into voguing right now. Like I'm so into witches right now. So I could love this even more. Cozy fantasy with witches? I'm Ooh, I'm getting a bit emotional thinking <laughs> What is wrong with me? You know when you I actually got a bit choked up there thinking about a cozy fantasy with witches because I am so beyond excited for it. Is that crazy? That's I, that was not fake. I genuinely choked up. Like my heart got in my chair. Whoa, that was a lot, Megan. But yeah, I'm gonna be reading this this month. I'm so excited. I think I'm gonna adore it. Um, and yeah, hopefully I will. So there we have it. That is TBR Cluedo for the month of November. I am so excited for the books I'm gonna be reading in November. I've got about to 10 billion books to read. <laughs> so I really need to up my reading pace and just like read, 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 read. But um, yeah, let me know what you're gonna be reading in November. Let me know if you've read any of these books, which ones you're most excited to see me read. Maybe you wanna have your eye on some of them and wanna see what I think. I am glad to be of service. <laughs> And if you go to the end, comment a magnifying glass, magnif I was gonna say just magnifying emoji, magnifying glass emoji in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.